going on, everybody? We'll take that off the screen there. Happy Saturday night. Hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend up to this point. Uh, we had some rough weather come through the area uh, yesterday. Uh, but other than that, all good here. Got a little uh, little coffee tonight, which I think I'm probably going to be pretty wired. I had to, I just had a, a, a venti cup of Starbucks um, maybe two, three hours ago. And this is a big-ass cup of coffee as well, as you can see. Red rum. Um, so yeah, tonight uh, just wanted to come on here, try this stream again. Tried to do this last weekend, um, didn't quite work out. Some technical difficulties uh, we were dealing with, as you can hear uh, my dog Abby in the background saying hi. Um, you may hear her throughout this broadcast and all future broadcasts going forward because she's a little loud. Um, so I apologize ahead of time. Um, so yeah, we're, tonight we're going to be looking at uh, a collection of photos um, taken by John Rice, who worked on the film um, Dawn of the Dead. Um, uh, he plays the uh, the uh, SWAT team member at the beginning of the film, uh, the one with the shotgun, who you know who sees the the first zombie of the film. Um, that's John Rice. Um, so not only was he in the film, he was also um, I don't know exactly what his his title would be, but he he worked behind the scenes. Um, pretty, I guess you could call him a grip um, or grip type. I don't want to you know shortchange him or anything. I mean, he was you know pretty important to the uh, to the production as a whole. Um, but while on set, um, he was able to take quite a few photos um, that have been recently um, shared. Um, you can find these photos. I believe Brian Rose. Um, is the name of the guy who posted them on the Dawn of the Dead fan page um, on Facebook. Um, so they're there if you'd like a better, a closer look. Uh, if you'd like, you know, um, he, he basically kind of put them up for everybody. Um, I believe he said he was a filmmaker and uh, he purchased this collection and he's planning on donating it to the GARF, the George A. Romero Foundation. Um, uh, I can't remember if he's donating it to them and then they're donating or they're giving it to the Romero, um, the archive at the uh, University of Pittsburgh, or if he's just given directly to them. Not sure. Either way, I know they're going to the University of Pittsburgh, uh, George A. Romero archive, something that I would absolutely love to do. And I believe it's uh, <clears throat> I believe it's open to the public uh, if you uh, call it, arrange it ahead of time. So. One of these days when I get a little extra time and a little extra money, maybe I'll take a, uh, you know, an extra trip to Pittsburgh just solely for that. Cause you know, there's just boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff there um, to go through. I mean, screenplays, law screenplays, uh, behind the scenes, photos, props, all the stuff that basically he accumulated over the years. Um, so anyway, I hope this stream's going well so far. There's no technical difficulties. Um, if uh, if there is, please let me know. Um, I can try to rectify that or just cut the cord on this some bitch um, <laughs> before before it's too late. But uh, but yeah, hopefully this is coming through. We're gonna go through some photos. There's roughly thirty ish photos uh, to go through tonight. Um, again, I did this last week, so I have seen them. I've gone over them, um, and I do have a little more information on them this week. Um, more so than I did last week. There's quite a few, there's a number of people, um, in these photos that I'm not hundred percent sure who they are. If you know, let me know in the comments. Um, um, you know, more than, more than happy to, uh, to learn as much about, uh, Dawn of the Dead as possible. I've been, gosh, it's been over 20 years now. I think the first time I saw Dawn of the Dead, it was 90, I want to say 98. Um, that's a right around the time frame. It was right around when Resident Evil 3 came out because I was a big fan of that as, uh, in 98. So I think that came out in 98. So it was probably right around that time. So, uh, yeah. Been studying and following this movie for a long, long time. So, um, but before we get started, tomorrow night I'm planning on doing a uh, Martin 4K review and uh, discussion overall of the film. Um, so join me again tomorrow night um, if you want to discuss the new Second Sight release of Martin. 
that just came out. Uh, I did the uh, unboxing and uh, um, and just the overall look of the packaging the other night. And I mean, the packaging, the just the the you know. Uh, the stuff that comes with it is 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 fantastic. I couldn't be happier with that. I've already popped in some of the special features. It does feature um, a uh, pretty much a full length documentary on on Martin, and it's one of the better ones I've seen in a really long time. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go over that tomorrow as well. Um, along with there was an interview uh, about a twenty minute interview with Donald Rubenstein on it. Um, there's actually a short film on it. Uh, I posted. So the film that I put up, oh, what day was it now? Thursday, I think, last Thursday, uh, Sweet Sal, directed by um, Tony Buba, who worked on Martin and Dawn. He was the, um, the sombrero hat uh, wearing uh, biker who gets his arm cut off. The, I don't know if you call him the sombrero guy or the, uh, the blood pressure guy. Um, anyway, that's Tony Buba. I believe he's in some of the photos tonight as well. Um, so yeah, he uh, he did the um, what the hell was I even talking about? Um, he did Sweet Sal, which I think is fantastic. I think he's you know Tony Boob is the, these little films on uh, Lightning Over Braddock. Let me grab it real quick. Ugh. Put out by uh, Kino Kino Lorber um, a few years ago. Uh, let's see when this came out. Twenty nineteen. This came out. Lightning Over Braddock. The films of Tony Booba. Um, Check this out. There's the actual documentary or whatever you would call it. Lightning over Braddock, uh, a Rust Bowl fantasy is available on this, along with just, gosh, there's maybe 20, 20 to 30 short films that Tony Booba made and has made over the years in Braddock, the film, you know, where Martin was filmed and, and you know, where the film was set. Um, it's just really, really fascinating stuff. Tony Booba is such a uh, talented filmmaker. Um he, he, his main job on Dawn, he was a sound guy. Um, but man, what a talented filmmaker in his own right. And of course, his brother, Pat, went on to a pretty big career in, in Hollywood, I believe, as an editor. Uh, he worked with Romero. He was George's editor from, I want to say, Creep Show all the way through Dark Half, that whole period. So uh, the boob is definitely, uh, definitely, uh, you know, played a major part in, in, in the making of Martin and Dawn and uh, really all of George's films. I mean, they were, um, they worked a lot with George on the winners series, um, that series of uh, sports documentaries that George made in the mid seventies. Um, they were a big part of that as well. Um, so yeah, get a chance to check it out. Lightning over Braddock, Tony Booba. Oh, oh, there it is. Um, but the, uh, well, I started this, you know, rant on um the martin uh release second side has one of uh, tony booba shorts on it uh j roy um uh, new and used furniture i think is the title of it or something like that it the character j roy and i mean it's uh, a <laughs> i don't know I, I can't wait to get into it uh we're gonna review that as well um just such an interesting character and and just one of those guys you just don't see all, you just don't see very much of anymore these days um the whole point, the whole plot of it is basically he's opening a uh, new and used furniture store in Braddock. Um, and this thing, it's like 73, I believe, when this was made. Um, and he has this whole idea of where he went, the second hand, the second floor of this building that he bought where the where the store is. He wants to put a, a used car section so people can just drive up into the second floor of this building. I, don't, I have no dude was a big, uh, you know, big dreamer. Um, <laughs> as you can tell when you watch it, but yeah, that's included. There's four commentaries included on it. I've already checked out two of them over the years. The one, the two with George, I haven't checked out the other two yet, uh, with, uh, Travis Crawford and Kat Denning or whoever the hell it was. But, uh, but yeah, I, I still haven't checked out the, um, the actual film, the 4k, um, uh, release of this. I've heard some mixed reactions to be honest with you. Um, some people say it doesn't look as good as they were hoping, but then you also got to keep in mind that this was a film shot in 1977 on a, I think, uh, in the documentary, Mike Gornick said that, the uh, overall budget altogether, the best, you know, uh, guesstimate that he could come up with was, it was probably shot for about 95,000 bucks altogether. 
um, and it was shot on 16 millimeter and you know, it's only going to look so good, uh, pretty much. Um, but I'm, I'm still very excited to see it. It's, um, God, I don't even think, yeah, Martin didn't even have a, a Blu-ray release in the States. Um, I mean, this wasn't released technically in the States, but I mean, it, there, Martin really hasn't had a Blu-ray release period. Um, other than I think Japan, um, Portugal, where I pulled that Portuguese version out. This actually came out on Blu ray. I believe it was Portugal. Um, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, please correct me. And I can't read this language, so I can't tell you for sure. But we'll just go with Portugal now for now, because why not? Um, so, okay, enough of my blabbering. Let's get to these photos. Um, this is the John Rice collection. Now, there is a watermark on these uh, crediting John Rice. Um, these were available for use for nonprofit only, not making a dime off this stream. So, um, so yeah, we should be good if, if <laughs> hopefully to God, YouTube doesn't take us down again. Um, I think I'm like 99% sure that we're, we're in, we're in the clear this time. Uh, so let's get into it. Uh, these are the photos. Let me make sure I pull this up here. So this first photo right here. Okay. Everything looking good on my end here. Yeah, get a better look here. And da -ba -da -ba -da. okay, I think we're good. I think this is going to work out this time. Like I said, new to all this, so I'm still trying to figure out what the hell I'm doing. So we're starting out here. This first photo is actually a photo of John Rice himself. And this looks like it was taken um, uh, during the, uh, the tenement scene at the beginning of the film. Um, there's two photos of him here. Yep, here's one. Uh, you can see a little bit more of the background here. You can kind of tell it's the tenement just because of the uh, the paint scheme here on the walls. Um, definitely matches up. So this is the uh, this is your photographer of these photos tonight, folks. So John Rice, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you. <laughs> documenting these uh these photos because these are a bunch these are a lot a lot of these photos i have uh, the first time seeing i don't believe they're they've ever been printed anywhere they're not out um readily available for people so uh, so yeah i was floored when i saw these for the first time all right so now we're getting into this looks like a shoot um outside of the mall uh, when they are moving the trucks to the entrances and, and, and doing a lot of damage to a lot of zombies out there. So starting from left to right here, looking at this photo, I believe that this uh, this woman here on the left-hand side with the scarf and the beanie and the coat on, I'm pretty sure that that's uh, Christine Romero, or Christine Forrest, as she was known at this time. Uh, she was also the uh, assistant director on this. Um, so she's out there freezing to death, I'm sure, because... Uh, I do believe this stuff was filmed. Um, not sure if these scenes were. I'm, I'm going to say that they were filmed pre-Christmas at this point. So, I mean, we're talking the winter of '77. It's, you know, who knows how cold I've heard. You know, you hear stories Ken Foray and, um, uh, you know, just just talking about how cold um, it was at this time, especially with the helicopter going out there so it's christine romero there on the left um of the of the shot i believe this guy standing here with the sweater on i believe that is clayton hill uh sweater zombie um you see let's see just moving left to right here um guy on the ground is the zombie that gets his arm ripped off underneath the weight of the truck um i don't know his name but I do, I am fairly certain that that guy was an actual amputee. Um, you see Mike Gornick there next to him shooting. Um, one common theme that we're going to, we're going to find out uh, looking at these photos. Um, you're going to see a lot of Mike Gornick and in most of the photos that you see him in, you're going to, he's going to be holding a camera. <laughs> he's going to be hard at work doing what he does. And we'll get into a little bit more uh, of my praise for Mike Gornick here in just a little bit. Um, 
Next to him, crouching down, that is Tom Savini. And if you look close enough, here between Tom's knee and the zombie's foot, you see a tube that is going up the zombie's pants. And Tom, as you can see, is, is holding some kind of, uh, I'm guessing some kind of pump for the blood. And it's an effect that you, that you can't really see in the film. But I'm guessing tube is going up his leg, uh, probably up his back, out his arm so he can pump blood as he rips the arm off. Not an effect that really worked out uh, in the film, but, you know, uh, it was still fairly effective for what it was. And then here on the far right is the gray suit wearing zombie. I believe this guy used to do conventions back in the day. Um, I'm not sure if uh, if he's still with us, honestly. Um, but definitely one of the more memorable zombies, uh, especially with the original VHS packaging. Um, I believe he's on the back of it. Uh, it's over there. I'm not going to go get it. <clears throat> but yeah, definitely memorable. I mean, uh, if you remember in Document of the Dead, uh, Roy Frumkus, uh behind the scenes documentary on the making of Dawn of the Dead, um, you hear Tom talk about a guy that came in to get made up as a zombie wearing a, uh, a three piece suit. And so, you know, Tom decided to make him up like a mortician would and, and, you know, put the, uh, you know, so he's got the three, but I'm think I'm wondering if that's the guy that Tom's talking about there. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Could be, could not be. Uh, he's holding something there in his left hand. Not sure what that is. It looks like a, a bag or a, I have no idea. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> and here we see a shot of zombies coming in between the trucks here. Um, the person here on the left, uh, I did, you know, I looked at these photos a little bit last weekend and I kind of figured it out here live, but since nobody could hear that, that fucking stream, um, Let's, uh, I'm, I'm just going to share this information. And the, this person here on the left, that is um, Catherine Colbert. She was the still photographer of Dawn of the Dead. And I believe she went on to marry Richard Rubenstein. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Catherine Rubenstein. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was Catherine Colbert. Um, so she, she, she played a major role um, behind the scenes here with Dawn. Um, here you see, here's another big... You can tell you can just see how cold it is out there. You can see, <laughs> all you gotta do is look at Christine's face here in this photo. You can see she is doesn't look too happy uh, in this shot. Now this person here on the far left, I cannot tell a hundred percent who that is. Uh that may be Pad Booba. Um if I were to make a, just a wild off the cuff guess, I believe that's Pat Booba. Um Guy there with the, looks like the cigar in his mouth right next to him. Not sure who that is. Um, with the beanie on and, and bundled up like that, it's, it's kind of hard to tell. Now this guy here standing here, oh, here's another picture of Michael Gornick. And uh, as always, he is setting up his shots. That dude worked tirelessly um, for George for years and years and years. Just one of the, to me, Mike Gornick is the true MVP um, of this period uh, of George's career for Martin, which I think he started, he actually started his first film was the crazies, I believe, but from Martin up to day of the dead. And then Gornick went on to actually direct creep show Two, uh, which only there's a, a new book out um, on the making of creep show Two by Lee Carr, uh, the guy who, uh, who uh, wrote the making of uh, day of the dead, the book on that, which is, uh, pretty much widely considered to be the, uh, the Bible, <laughs> uh, on, on the making behind the scenes of, of any George film ever. Um, which I got it and I, you know, it's, uh, it, it's amazing. So I can't wait to check out the creep show two book. Um, so yeah, Mike Gornick's there. I can't tell the guy is it standing behind him. He kind of looks like Bill Paxton, but I don't think Bill Paxton worked on this movie. Um, guy here on the far right, kind of creeping into the the the, the right-hand side of the photo here. Not sure who that is right off the bat, but I do know this the girl crouching down behind uh, Mike there. That That's Catherine Colbert as well. So basically, I guess her job as a still photographer was to kind of go to point her camera 
wherever Mike was pointing his camera, basically, and taking photographs of it. Uh, which I think a lot, a lot of the still photography that came out for Dawn of the Dead um, pretty much looks, you know, shot for shot um, from the film. So, so that'll be a recurring theme tonight. Where's Catherine Colmer? And there's a woman later in this that I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to take a closer look at Catherine Colmer, but I think that maybe, maybe her may not be. I'm not sure. And here's a shot of the WGON traffic bird flying above the Monroeville Mall. And you know, I mean, as cold <laughs> as it is, it's got to be made 10 times worse with those propellers above your head at all times while you're trying to film this stuff. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing a lot of the stuff was filmed probably in the morning um, before the mall opens, um, probably on a Sunday, because I know... Typically, I know around here, shopping malls don't open on Sundays until noon. Maybe that's changed. I don't. I don't know. I don't really go to a lot of a lot of malls anymore. But back in the day, on Sundays, malls wouldn't open until noon. So, I'm guessing maybe that's when this took place, um, right around Christmas uh, Christmas time. Um, let's see, here's another shot of the uh, zombie that loses his arm, and this guy here standing directly behind him. That's Tony Buba, and next to him is uh, Christine Romero. You can tell with the uh, scarf and the hat. Um, I'm not sure what this guy's name is. I'd love, I'd love to find out. I need to look into that. If anybody knows, let me know down in the comments who is the amputee zombie. Um, he gets his arm ripped off. I'm not sure. It looks like there's some kind of appliance there at the bottom of his arm. Uh, look, it, it, honestly, it kind of looks like a, uh, what do you call them? those little cones that you put oil in, Tin Man wears on his head, uh, kind of looks like something like that, but I'm not 100% sure, uh, big shot, a lot of zombies here, guy on the left here, not sure who that is, um, it's a sweet jacket though, um, can't quite tell who that is from behind though, but you will see the nurse zombie, Sharon Hill, one of the, if you get a chance to meet her at a convention, because I know she still does conventions, uh, her and her her husband, both Clayton, uh, sweater vest zombie, used to do a ton of conventions um, back in the day. And they were the, just the nicest people you could hope to meet at a convention. I mean, I know you go to a convention and, and you meet a lot of, a lot of people you look up to and you've watched for years and years and years that are in your favorite films and you know, and sometimes it's not quite what you expect. Um, but the first time that I met Clayton and Sharon, I mean, my God, you talk about just they're, they're the kind of people. And I'd put Lori Cardill um, in this category. Um, John Russo, to a degree, uh, with my experiences, I'd put into this category. They're the, they're the celebrities that you meet at a convention that are more interested in, in asking you questions and talking to you and finding out more about you. Even if, you know, even, yeah, you're paying for their autograph and, you know, they're, they don't have to be nice to you. Um, if you've ever met Tom Savini, I love Tom to death, but he, he's not there to be nice to you, you know? Um, and there's a lot of celebrities, quote unquote, uh, that you meet at a lot of conventions that are, you know, there's a lot to be desired. Uh, a lot of the times, but with Sharon and Clayton Hill and Sharon still to this day, I know she's going to be at Living Dead Weekend again this year. Just the nicest, sweetest people um, you could meet. Uh, I know Clayton, uh, Clayton died. It's been quite a while now. Uh, it was early 2010s. I can't remember the exact year, but um, yeah, it's just, just terrible. But she uh, carrying the, uh, carrying the legacy on. So nurse zombie, I salute you. Uh, not sure, not 100% sure who these other zombies are here. Uh, I want to say this lady here in like the green that may be, I'm not even going to say. <laughs> just out of fear of just being completely dead ass wrong. And somebody, somebody watching this and be like, oh, you know, you fucking idiot. That's, uh, that's, uh, Nancy Johnson works down at the, uh, the giant eagle. I want to say that's Denise Kiss, but I'm not 100% sure. The only thing that makes me think that 
um, is her, her wardrobe here. And then, of course, here's Mike Gornick, camera in his hand, going to work. Now, this time, Catherine Colbert is uh, a little bit to Gornick's right, shooting over the hood of this truck. So, not exactly the sh same shot, but she may be shooting more towards uh, uh, Scott here. As you can see him in the truck. Uh, I'm moving my, uh, my arrow around here on the screen as if people can... <laughs> As if you guys can see what the hell I'm doing. But uh, uh, then, of course, right here, our first shot of the man himself, George Romero, looking over um, Mike's uh, Mike's shoulder here, getting getting the shot. Um, and, of course, you can see Romero, if you look close enough there in his left hand, got a cigarette lit and doing his thing the guy here creeping up behind george on the very far right <laughs> i'm not sure that may be um oh uh, well god damn what's his name um uh fix guy i can't think of his name right now off the top of my head oh fuck it's right there anyway it'll come to me here in a minute and the guy next to george right here Guy or gal, I can't quite tell 100%. Mm, that may be Tony Booba. I'm not sure. Yeah, a lot of people in this. A lot of people in this. Oh, what is that fucking guy's name? Give me one sec. I gotta figure this out or I'm not gonna be able to continue without ripping my own hair out. Uh, where's my phone? Google it. Yes, folks, you were tuning in tonight, spending your Saturday nights with me, Alpha Romero. Look at these photos and watching me Google some shit. Really, if you're if you're watching this and, and <laughs> if you're watching this and, and enjoying uh, watching me Google this. You really need to find a hobby. But I appreciate it. I really do. I really do. It's my Dawn of the Dead button-up shirt I got. Um, okay, okay. Need some, uh, some music here. Jesus Christ. Gary Zeller. Gary fucking Zeller. That may be Gary Zeller. Sorry. I may cut this part out in my post. Um, but yeah, the guy on the far right here, I'm that may be Gary Zeller. I can't quite tell. I'm not 100% sure, but this looks like a scene that may have a few... Uh, he, he basically did like the, um, the explosive effects. Gunshots, explosions, shit like that. All right. Now, this is a photo. Uh, this is... what? God, everything's slipping my mind now. That is Tom Savini's dummy. Um, what is it? Goddamn dummy's name now. Boy, this is falling right, right down the shitter. Um, Boris. Boris the dummy. <laughs> All right, I need to center myself here. God almighty. So Boris the dummy laying there, right, uh, getting run over by a truck. And actually, you can see it. Mean, you can't really tell on the uh, in the actual film, but there is blood by his head. So he's definitely been uh, been taken down by a gunshot uh, before he was run over. So don't worry, folks. Um, he wasn't actually run over by the uh, the truck. So um, it was all just a, a special effect there with the uh, blood. No dummies were harmed in the making of this film. And that may be, uh, maybe John Kiss looks from, I mean, I, he looks familiar. I don't remember him in the cop uniform, um, in the film. Um, but he is the, the husband of Denise and they, they do conventions, John and Denise, um, together still. It's amazing to think. And that's the thing, folks. It's, it's like, you look at the modern, here we go, Grant. And five, four, three, two, one, go. You look at modern 
zombie films. And I, I, I truly believe that over time, the, the more advanced and more, uh, um, you know, uh, elaborate the zombie makeup effects. God, I know, you know, the blue zombies or whatever people nowadays, they, they're like, oh, why they're all blue. It, it, this was like the first, as we know it now, you know, the first big time, big scale zombie film. Um, and I think there's a beauty in, in the blue face, gray zombies. Um, they're, they had character. You remember them. The Harry Krishna zombie, the nurse zombie, the sweater zombie. Um, you remember them. Um, and a guy like this, I mean, cop zombie, you'd remember. And that's the beautiful thing about these, um, uh, you know, about the zombies in this, is they can still do 45 years down the road. They can still do conventions, and people will recognize them, and people are elated to meet them. The machete zombie uh, helicopter zombie. I mean, you remember these. The, the zombies were actual characters in this film because, you know, yeah, they're zombies, but they're, they were still people, individuals with lives and, and unique traits about them. And um, you just don't get that anymore in, in zombie films. And there's zombie films now that, you know, that I do like, you know, um, Train to Busan. Love that film. That's maybe the only zombie movie. Um, that really made me just cry at the end, and I'm not afraid to say it. Um, that's 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 a good one. I uh, love 20 Days Later when it came out. I thought that did um, that was a perfect film. Um, not a perfect film. I'm not going to say that, but I mean, just for what it was and what it was trying to accomplish, for what it could accomplish at that time. Um, and I mean, if you look at the films that were made around 20 Days Later, I mean, um, it was just something completely different. Uh, but yeah, there's a there's a lot that I like, so I'm not shitting just completely. But I think we do did lose something over time um, with just the look of zombies. I mean, God, you you if you come up to me on uh, at the grocery store and say, "Hey, I was a zombie in Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead," I'd believe you. Like I'd be like, "Okay, probably." I wouldn't be able to notice, you know, either way. Um, but if I'm walking through the to <laughs> if I'm walking through the mall, <laughs> you know, no pun intended, if I'm walking through the mall and I see. Um, uh, you know, if I see uh, Mike Christopher, I'm like, wait a minute, Terry Christmas zombie. For if you see Sharon Hill, you're like, oh, it's a nurse zombie, you know, yada yada yada. Um, but I just think it's something we lost over time, and this is definitely, um, because goddamn, there's there's times where I watch a uh, zombie movie now, and and you know, George's films were guilty of this later on, and Land of the Dead, the zombie that bites uh, Sean Roberts, um, at the beginning of Land of the Dead. I saw that movie like five times before I even realized that that zombie was uh, a police officer, a cop. Uh, just because of just the, it was just so much makeup. There's so much, there's grime on the clothes, and you can't really tell what the hell these people are wearing or, or what they look like. Or and you know, it is what it is. But all right, let's let's keep moving. We we still got we still got some more to go here, and uh, I'm not gonna be doing. I'm not gonna stay up all night, even though this coffee is doing uh, fucking wonders right now. So. Um, okay, so this is the, oh, man, I believe, I think that is Denise Kiss right there. Um, you can tell by her outfit here. I believe that's the same woman, um, from the, 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 the photo, uh, a few, uh, photos ago. Um, the guy here looks like uh, a priest in an exorcist movie. I'm not a hundred percent sure who that is, to be honest with you. Um, I'm sure if a lot of these names, if you told me, I'd know right off, I'd be like, Hey, that's right, that is that guy, but man, I just right off the bat, couldn't tell you. Got the 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 um the camera here, not sure, not 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 too sure who that is either, to be honest with you. Um a lot of zombies in this shot, as you can see here. Um this is one probably one of the big zombie scenes is probably when the uh trucks are coming down the hill and through the parking lot through the zombies and um you know, big zombie days. Like I said, they probably shot this early in the morning too on a Sunday, so um, let's see what's up next. Here's a, it looks like a, just a closer shot of the, uh, the photo from, um, you know, a couple minutes ago. You can see there's, it looks like there's a couple of other zombies in here. Um, but nobody, you can really tell them. You can see George there on the far, just peeping in here on the edge of the edge of the photo. 
There's Boris. Get about to get his head run the fuck over. And as you can see back here in the back, there's George and a couple of uh, a couple other guys there. I can't hardly tell. You can always tell George because the guy was like six six or something like that. He looked like a basketball player. And over on the left hand side of the truck, though, as you can see, it looks like some guy's just taking off. He's like, oh, I'm fucking out of here. Um. Okay, so uh, looks like we're in a different part of the shoot here. Uh, guy on the right here is uh, the man himself, Martin himself, John Amplis. He was the casting director here um, for Dawn of the Dead, and he was also Martinez uh, at the beginning of the film, um, which there's always been a, a bit of a <laughs> friendly debate between uh, John Amplis and uh, Joe Shelby on uh, who is actually Martinez. Um, because because if the argument is Joe Shelby says that he's the real Martinez, because as, when the door opens and, and the, uh, you know, the people come running out, um, he's the first out. He's the first guy out. So he's Martinez leading the charge. John Ample says he's Martinez and just because he can, I guess. I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't really have a uh, stance either way. But anyway, the guy that John Amplis is looking at. Now, I could be completely wrong. Correct me if I am wrong. Um, always, uh, we're here to learn. Here to learn, folks. The guy that John is looking at in this photo, I believe that that's Cliff Forrest, uh, Christine Forrest's brother, who is the guy at the beginning of the film in the TV station. You can actually see him in Dawn of the Dead like a couple quick shots, but he's the guy at the TV station at the beginning of the movie that when Fran wakes up, he catches her and he said, you all right? Shit's really hitting the fan. I believe that that's Cliff Forrest, and I believe that that's who that is. Um, fun, fun, fun fact to know. Cliff Forrest actually went on, I believe he went on originally. First, I believe, I want to say he either became the president or he actually bought Iron City Beer. Um, for a while there, I think he he's either the owner or he was just the the president of uh, Iron City Beer for quite a while. He now is the president and uh, owner of a mining company. Um, what's the name of that uh, mining company? I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's a mining company in in the Pittsburgh area. So this guy is a, is a big time player um, in in the Pittsburgh area. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool to look back. You know that that's that's the thing about Dawn of the Dead. I mean, you know, uh, uh, Franco Harris was on the set of this. He wasn't actually in there. I think he was supposed to be. I think there was something planned for him, but he never made it actually into the film. But Franco Harris was in there at the time. Imagine that. I mean, one of the biggest stars in the NFL at the time, just showing up to hang out on the set of Dawn of the Dead. I believe him and Ken Foray were 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 uh, pretty good friends at the time. But yeah, there's just a lot of guys and 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 gals that went on to to do big things uh, that started here on on Dawn of the Dead. Um, okay, this is John Rice here actually. Um, this looks like they're getting set to shoot the uh, the Flyboy scene where Flyboy meets his demise. Uh, as you can see right here over uh, John's shoulder, you can see the zombie that Flyboy shoots and pew, you know. Takes uh, what do people call him the Grandpa Joe zombie? He looks like Grandpa Joe from uh, Willy Wonka. Uh, let's see, looks like they're getting ready to shoot that. Now this is uh, this is actually a uh, uh, you know a fairly well seen photo of uh, George with the gun aiming up. Of course, Mike Gornick shooting it. Um, oh, who's this guy next to Gornick? Oh. It's right there on the tip of my tongue. Can't think of what this guy's name is. But yeah, this is a fairly, um, you know, uh, a fairly popular photograph um, of George. Because at this scene where the uh, the biker gang is is shooting at uh, Ken Foray as he's running across the uh, the top, the second, uh, second floor of the mall, uh, that's actually George's hand with the gun. Um, so this is them shooting that. And of course, George has got a coffee in his hand. No cigarette, actually, this time. He was actually, uh, uh, I guess, learned from John Carpenter's mistakes on Halloween. You know, the scene where 
you know, Michael Myers goes but hides behind the bush, and you can see the cigarette smoke there in the camera. Um, this is a bit of a darker photo, I believe. I can't, I, I can't tell if that's Tom or somebody helping Tom, but the guy that's getting there, you can tell you if you look close enough, you can see the prosthetics that are going on. To uh, this is Tasso Stravakis or Stavrakis. Bill Billy from Kentucky, folks. It's that's a hard name for me. Um, looks like he's getting set up for some squibs. Um, and of course, Tasso worked with Tom, you know, for you. They were, you know, pretty close during this time. This through Night Riders, I think pretty much all the way through Day of the Dead. Tasso and Tom were, were you know, were, were, were a pair there. And then Tasso did stunts on Dawn of the Dead. He helped Tom with uh, some of the effects, as you can see here. Um, so, yeah, Tasso, very important um, in the making of Dawn. Um, now, I want to say that this guy here, um, <laughs> I want to say that's Jay Stover, um, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I want that looks like Jay Stover to me, uh, which you would recognize in, in the film as the zombie with the always, and I've always wondered, um, always has the rifle in his hand, you know, and I've always wondered if, if that was, uh, if George was trying to, um, because I mean, the movie, when you, the movie, the, the zombies in the movie, um, you, you hear, um, uh, you hear Richard France's character say that they, they have memories and, and all that, which, you know, you learn when you meet Bub and Day of the Dead. And, <clears throat> and this is, to me, that was George's, I wonder if that was his subtle way of saying that the zombie wants to commit suicide. He, he, there's a gun pointed at his face and he just keeps it there. Somebody please pull this fucking trigger. Um, maybe I'm thinking too deeply about just a silly gag in the movie, but I think if it was just a silly gag, I think George would have just let it play, you know, a one out play. He goes off in the distance. You never see him again, but you just see him throughout the movie. Um, that's just a, you know, and that just could be just because of, uh, I don't know, convenience at the time. Because as you can see, you know, Jay where he was a uh, weapons coordinator, I believe, on this. And uh, honest to God, folks, I'm not sure who uh, who this girl is. Um, <laughs> uh, if you know, please let me know. Um, anyway, here's some uh, some bikers running into the community action center booth. Uh, apparently they're not a big fan of the uh, CAC, as they uh, are known in the Pittsburgh Monroeville area. <laughs> the CAC. All right. And here's another shot of Mike Gornick setting up a shot. Like I said, anytime you see Mike Gornick in these photos, he's he's working. He, he's working to set up shots. I mean, goddamn, how many shots are in Dawn of the Dead? How many setups was that? You could never do that today. You just couldn't. You just couldn't have those many setups with the budget and the time that they had. No fucking way. Um, but man, like I said, MVP, definitely one of the MVPs of this film is Mike Gornick and, and his cinematography. And it's not like, you know, and it's fine because I think they worked so well together in that way. George and Mike, they worked so well in that way because George, George was an editor, first and foremost. George was an editor. He, he knew what shots he was getting. He knew what order they were going in. Um, master, master editor, in my in my opinion. Uh, that To me, that's George's strong suit. And, and Mike Cornick knew that, and, and he, um, he knew exactly what to get and what George would want. Um, they, they just worked so well together. Um, and it wasn't like, oh, let me do this long sweeping shot of this or that. It was just, no, we need a shot of this. We need a shot of this. We need a shot of this. We need to do it uh, in the next hour. Can you do three setups in an hour? Sure, let's 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 do it. You know, it, it's crazy, crazy shit. Um, okay, so here we see John Rice uh, working with, this is Robert Williams, um, the guy holding the boom mic here. Um, you see him, you actually, it's funny, you can actually see him. There's a full frame version of Dawn of the Dead that was available uh, on, on some of the uh, the uh, European box sets that were released. It's the full frame version, um, unmatted. 
And there's actually a shot where you can see him clear as day standing there with the with the boom mic pole. Um, and then JC Penney's, I believe. So if you have that and you watch that, keep an eye out for uh, for Robert Williams there. Um, and here he is again with um, our man, Tony Buba, director of Lightning Over Braddock, Sweet Sal, J-Roy. And, of course, uh, they would be working together. Robert Williams would have been uh, Tony. He, I'm not 100% sure, so I'm not going to just proclaim this shit. But uh, um, I, wonder if, I wonder if Robert Williams worked with Tony on a lot of his, uh, a lot of his films as his sound guy. Because Tony was technically the sound guy for this film. Um, so I'm sure he would want to work with his own, his own crew. Um. And of course, you can tell that's Tony Buba because he's got the uh, his biker getup on. Mm -hmm. No sombrero though. Don't see a sombrero. And here's a shot. Looks like Cliff Forest. And once again, I am not sure who that is that he's standing next to. Uh, but they are. Uh, what does that say there behind him? A new year, new beginning. So there. This was shot after Christmas, I believe. These, uh, the biker scenes. Uh, let's get moving here. Some squibs going off on some zombies. Uh, and you can see the blood splattering out. Um, Baker shoes behind. And here's a good shot of Tom uh, taking the tumble off the balcony. Uh, the second floor of Monroeville Mall. Now, Tom was, uh, as everybody knows, did the stunts. Um, <laughs> Tom took a lot of bumps um, in wrestling terminology, and he's still taking, taking tumbles and, and falls. I mean, he was literally hit by a car uh, a couple of years ago, riding his bike through uh, Pittsburgh, right around where he lived, hit by a car, and then I think like a couple of days later was out of the hospital and just like, yeah, fine. And the dude's he's like 75 years old now. When I'm 75, if I get hit by, uh, you know, a, a fucking tricycle, I'll probably be out. If I get hit by a car now, I, I, there's no fucking way. Tom's a special, special guy. Um, just a, wow. One of a kind. One, Tom's definitely a one of a kind guy. I know I kind of uh, got a dig at him uh, <laughs> earlier with, uh, with my convention talk. But honest to God, though, Tom is a, is a special, unique human being. And these movies would have never been made. George could have never done what these movies were um, without Tom. He, he just, it just wouldn't have happened. Um, they just, like, like George and Mike, work perfectly together, uh, George and Tom. And I think, you know, Tom, you know, Tom does a lot. Stunts, uh, of course, makeup effects acting, um, directing. Um, he only directed the night 90 remake. Um, but I think he also he's here recently. He did, uh, I think he did an episode of the creep show. I know he directed a couple episodes of tales from the dark side in the eighties. Um, but his one feature was night 90, but just a guy, I think he did all of his best work working with George best makeup effects that Tom ever did. Um, day of the dead. I think we, we could agree with that. It would either be Day of the Dead or, or possibly Creepshow, um, just for Fluffy alone. I mean, Fluffy is, is such an, an amazing um, effect that he was able to accomplish. Because that was really kind of out of Tom's wheelhouse. But I think Day of the Dead is, is widely regarded as his best actual makeup effects work. His best acting work was definitely Knight Riders. I, I don't care what anybody says. That is Tom's best role yeah, It was Knight Riders. Um he was fantastic in that. Uh, and then, of course, the stunts, stuff like this. And I believe at one point he missed, because there's like a whole section of um, boxes and mattresses that he was supposed to land on. I believe he missed it um, at one point. And I think cracked both of his uh, both of his heels or something at one point. But uh, more importantly, there's, a, there's the uh, stunt that... Uh, <clears throat> Where you see after you see him fall, there you see. I can't tell if it's actually if it's him or a dummy. If it's Boris, I can't tell. That's going into the fountain, taking a head dive into the into the fountain. I hope to God that that was 
which I wouldn't be shocked if it was Tom, but I hope to God that that was a dummy. Really well done, because I can't tell. Um, because if Tom just said, uh, don't, don't worry, George, I'll take a, uh, I'll take a head dive into the fountain at the mall. No, no, no worries. No biggie. But I'm, I'm 90% sure that that's a dummy. I don't think there's any way. I don't think he, he'd be walking today if he did that. It's not, but again, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised one bit if, uh, if he did. Anyway, that's, uh, my Tom's meeting right here. And a good squib shot here. Blood splattering all over the... Uh, oh, shit. They're having a sale at Baker Shoes. $4.98. $6.98. Holy shit. And look, those are some nice looking shoes, too. Um, yeah, there's some blood. Uh, headshot there. On that poor fella. And here's some bikers. This is Larry uh, in the sidecar here. That's Larry Vera. Um he was uh, he was kind of the guy I guess uh, that kind of just wrangled the uh, the bikers because these are real bikers that they use in this mall, um, and I think he knew some of the bikers something like he had some association with bikers um, that they actually got to be in this. But next to him riding, that's uh, that's Butchie who is who looks like an actual biker. If you see if you saw Butchie in the movie, you'd say oh that guy's a real biker. That, that dude's a hell of an angel. No, he was just, uh, <laughs> he drove a, a motorcycle, I guess, but he, he was actually just working on the film. He, uh, you know, was, he was on the crew of Dawn of the Dead. Um, but my God, you're talking about perfect casting. Um, and here is uh, Sam, or a young Sam Raimi. No, I'm just kidding. Not really. Um, once again, can't quite tell who that is. Um It's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't can't say for sure. Um, let me know in the comments if you know and I don't. Um, let's see, here's another uh, another shot of Tasso getting ready to. Looks like he's getting ready to get the uh, shit shot out of him here. Um, I can't tell who the uh, the zombies here. Looks like this guy's chatting up uh, chatting up this uh, lady zombie here that he's sitting next to. Maybe they, they may be married and have kids now. Who the hell knows? Um, okay, here's another uh, another guy. Doesn't, doesn't ring any bells. Doesn't look familiar to me. But if you look at this shot, though, it looks like there's like a can of film or something here. He may be working. Uh, yeah, I can't quite tell. But uh, if you look at this shot, though, where they're at and the, the layout of the boots, it's you can tell that this is probably the one... Quick shot when the bikers are raiding the mall and taking all the shit. You can see a quick shot of an arm coming in, swooping in, taking all the boots. I think this is where they shot that. Um, if I were just to make a guess, just just going off of, of what I'm seeing here. But um, here is John Rice with his lovely, lovely wife. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can tell that's uh, one of the mannequins that the uh, the protagonists were having target practice on on the ice rink. You see the bullet holes here, a couple by the eyes, one in the throat, one in the shoulder. Um, and you can see they were they were getting to be better shot as they went along here. Went from shoulder to the neck, to the head, to the eyes. Um, that's a great shot. That's a great photograph right there. <laughs> Love that one. And here's a shot. You see Butchie on the bike. Can't tell if that's Larry Vera on there or not, or if they have a. Uh, I can't. I can't quite tell who that is. It could be a camera guy getting some shot. I know they they use that sidecar, which I think they may have used the white sidecar, uh, which you can actually see at the Living Dead Weekend. Uh, that it still it still exists. The white side car that Tom Savini's riding in when he's, you know, comes in, takes that lady's head off with the sword. That that motorcycle inside car still exists. Um, so I think that may be what they use. So yeah, I'm guessing Larry Bear is in this side car here. Um, here's a great shot of Tom. Tom being Tom. Tom loves the ladies. Let me tell you. If you want, that's the secret. If you meet Tom Savini. At a convention, the secret to having a good experience with Tom, and I'm not saying Tom's an asshole or anything. I'm not going to say that, but Tom's a kind of guy. He's he's an eccentric character. The dude's an artist. Um, 
So he's not always, you know, hey, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. He can be a little off-putting at times. But the secret, and this is just between me and you guys, this is if you want to have a fantastic experience with Tom at a convention, bring a girl over with you. Because Tom will just go right into, hey, how you doing? I'm Tom Savini and blah, blah, blah. And, and going straight into to Tom mode. And Tom will spend some time with you. Um, but yeah, that's awesome photo. Like, like again, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure this could be Catherine Colbert. Um, there's some film hanging around her neck here. I believe, <laughs> I don't know. Um, and if that's the case, you can see here, right here under the sword. I swear that looks like a little film canister, like for, for a uh, still photographer. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a wild guess and say that that's Catherine Colbert. Can't quite tell. Um, a hundred, hundred percent right now. Um, and then I believe this is the last photo of the night. Last, but definitely not least the man himself. Um, George Romero looking uh, pretty intimidating here in this photo. He's, he's probably, I mean, God, these guys were, you know, they didn't see sunlight. Um, for, for a long period of time because they shot all night in the mall. And by the time the mall was opening in the morning, they had to pack up and get out. And that's when they slept. So, I mean, these the, he was basically a vampire at this point. Um, but this, this is a wonderful picture, George. Um, he looks tired, but man. And you can tell this this film took a lot out of him, um, filming this, this, uh, this film, Dawn of the Dead. Definitely took a lot out of him. And going from this into Night Riders, which was also a really tough shoot for a lot of different uh, reasons, um, different than than the the difficulties in Dawn. It took a lot out of him. I believe, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he he got fairly sick after uh, after uh, Dawn of the Dead was finished. And um, but man, <clears throat> hard work really paid off. <laughs> Hard work really pays off, kids. But uh, yeah, he I just just the amount of shots that he was getting at the time, the hours that they were working, just all the you know plates that he was spinning at the time. Dude was dude put himself hundred percent into into this film. It was something you could tell he truly believed in, and I, I think he felt that way about uh, most of his films. I could I could name some movies that I I, I feel like. It, it, that didn't come across. Um, and as big of a fan of George as I am, I, I'm, I'll be honest and say, you know, stuff like The Dark Half, or um, or even like Monkey Shines to a to a to a degree. And even he's even himself said um, about films like There's Always Vanilla that he never felt. Uh, that he could fully embrace for one reason or another, but he definitely, definitely, um, put everything he had in, into, into this film and Knight Riders and Martin and good Lord. Sorry if you can hear that, but it took a lot out of him and I'm sure chain smoking and, and living on nothing but uh, black coffee is probably not the healthiest of uh, decisions either. Um, so yeah, that's it. And let me get out of here. All right. So there you have it. The John Rice collection of behind the scenes photos of Dawn of the Dead. Now, let me know what you guys thought of those photos. If you, like I said, if you have any information on, um, any of the people in the photos or any of these situations, the photo, anything at all, let me know down in the comments. Um, but yeah, I just thought those were fantastic. I think there's a, he actually put up another collection of photos taken by, um, Diane Donati, uh, as well, some black and white ones. So we may do another one of these, um, here again in the near future, um, and look at those. I think there's a few more, um, of those and there are of these, but, um, but yeah, and they're, they're great quality photos too. Uh, I was really Really impressed by the quality of these photos, but uh, but I want to thank John Rice for taking them. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brian Rose 
for uh, sharing them with everyone. Um, I, I, I live for stuff like that, man. Um, just like <laughs> it's one of my uh, one of my favorite podcasts is I'm here for the minutia. Uh, <laughs> and I hope you guys are, too. Um, so, yeah, if you guys have any questions or comments or anything uh, that you'd be interested in, let me know down in the comments. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing the Martin 4K review tomorrow night. Um, so I think once I get off here, I'm going to hop over and, uh, and check out that Martin release uh, right after I get done here. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate you guys checking this out tonight. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Um, so you guys have a great rest of the night. And as always... Stay scared.